Praise God, I really appreciate what I've heard so far. Um, as far as Bobby, I really like when Bob said, um, there is a trial, but God, <laughs> after that, not but I after that, but with God, after that, and what, and what I look for to be changed in what God has to do in my life. And Jeremy said, familiarity is not an intimacy. It does not make it a true in my life if I am not knowing God more and more. And I pray that that God will find a peaceful heart in my life and that God will find um, that my soul is well and um, that I will never um, go back to what I can do but what God can do. So I was reading Philippians 4, 6, 7 which says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving let your request be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard my heart and my mind. The, the isolation of um, be anxious for nothing, it's not the promise that I need to look for it. Um, it's not that, hey, you know what, God, 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 will, God will make me be anxious for nothing. That's not the promise. The promise is the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, um, will guard my heart and uh, my mind in Christ Jesus. The command is, by, by, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgivings, let my request be known to God. And not, when, when I was reading, like, let my request be known to God. And it's not that God will make me kneel down or go to Him to let my request. It's an action that I have to do my part to let the request be known to God. It's not like a mental gymnastics that I need to do, or you know, listen to some, you know, those, you know, those, those podcasts like those um, feel good podcasts that you are important, you know, don't give up and things like that. And it's not like that, but it's to, to be honest and go to God and say, God, if this circumstance, circumstances in my life, it's not, if I cannot find joy in this circumstance in my life, I need to go to God with honesty and say, Lord, I don't have joy in my life. I need you to come in and give me your Holy Spirit and tell me what it is that, why am I not feeling in joyful in trials? <laughs> And so I need to be honest with myself. And um, I, when I was thinking about that, I, I, I thought of uh, John 4:23, um, which is the story when um, where Jesus met with a woman, the Samaritan woman, at the at the well, and says, "But an hour is coming when now and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be His worshipper." And I was in, in connection with Philippians. Um, and I was like, I was connecting with it, like, what is it to be a true worshiper? And um, for me, I found out that in the verse um, on Philippians, verse that says, But with thanksgiving, let my request be known to God. I think the key for me is the thanksgiving. I need to be, I need to be thankful for what it is that is going on in my life because... This is the exact reason why, I mean, this is an opportunity for me to know God more and more. If there is no trial, there's no need for me, there's no need for me to go, I mean, if there's no trials, then will I really know if my heart, you know, if I, if, if I live by faith, you know, would I really know whether or not I have joy in the Lord? I wouldn't know. So I really appreciate it, you know, the fact that, uh, um, that you know that I can that I can go to God and ask for he, that He will give me joy in my heart, um, because if I say that my joy is to know God more and more, and I keep complaining about the difficulties, um, it's not. So then I'm just living a fake, um, you know, fake and hypocrite, and hip, hypocrite life. Um, but. But, you know, the trials is the very opportunity I have to experience the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Um, yeah, amen.
Um, thank you, Bobby, for uh, what you shared, to have that spirit of praise and uh, to have the even if faith and what Jeremy shared, it puts a, a godly fear in my heart. But I want to take, uh, uh, you know, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 onwards, uh, that little passage, I want to take that to heart um, and, and to begin by thinking of God's kindness um, in verse uh, 3 where it says, um, you know, to just think of his kindness and I know that the Lord's been kind to me, he's been lavish, he's been extremely good to me when I uh, look over my life over the years and uh, just his mere sovereignty over my life and uh, but just working backwards where it talks about those ugly sins uh, in chapter 2 verse 1 and uh, you know how it surfaces in uh, I think of that phrase in Nehemiah uh, when you're building that wall and uh, the phrase where it says next to me and uh, to think of those who, uh, the, whom the Lord has placed right next to me on either side and um, I just want to be uh, saved from all those ugliness, all that ugliness that, that surfaces every now and then. And, uh, the message version says, um, you know, to be saved from hurtful talk too and, and to think of what the Lord has done for me. and. Um, to know that uh, when I think of his kindness, I pray that it will reflect in, uh, in my attitude and, um, you know, when I see all that ugliness surfacing that I would uh, never want to go that way because I don't want to hurt the Lord, uh, first of all. And it goes on to talk about Jesus as a living stone and it says in verse um, 5, it says, um, you are being built up as a spiritual house too, just like the Lord. And I want to be encouraged by that. And, and in verse 6 it says, He who believes in him will not be disappointed. And in Isaiah um, 28 verse uh, 16, it says, He who believes in him, which is Jesus as a cornerstone, will not be disturbed. And um, that speaks volumes to me. I don't want to be disturbed. I want to be anchored in the Lord's love. And I believe he'll help me. Amen. Praise God. Um, I was <coughs> encouraged this week from uh, Luke 11, where Jesus talks about uh, praying for the Holy Spirit. Uh, so in Luke 11 chapter, sorry, Luke chapter 11, verse 5 onwards, uh, Jesus is talking about prayer, and there's basically two things that he says uh, from verse 5 to 9. He's uh, driving home the need to be persistent when he's uh, giving a parable about a guy uh, going and knocking at the door and asking for bread. Uh, and then from verse 10 onwards to verse 12, he's talking about how heavenly fathers give good things to their children and how heavenly father, uh, how our heavenly father wants to give uh, so much more to us. But there's uh, one phrase that, uh, so, so both of these parts are important, uh, I guess, in, in receiving the Holy Spirit, the persistence and believing that God is a good, good heavenly father. Uh, but there was a, a phrase in, in chapter 8 which really, struck my heart and uh, in, in the last part of verse verse 8 it says yet because of his persistence he will get up and give him as much as he needs give him as much as he needs and for me that really drove home uh, how much of the Holy Spirit I can get I can get as much of the Holy Spirit as I think I need if I think I don't need much of the Holy Spirit um I'll be fine. Like God will, you know, if I think I just need a few crumbs of, of a loaf, God will be okay. Here's your few, few crumbs. You, that's all you get. Uh, but in verse 13, it says, How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? And if, if, you, if you, you know, if it's tied to our faith, like what Bobby was saying, how, how, how much I ask God to give me and how much I believe God will give me, that's exactly how much I will receive from God. Uh, in, in, the, in the early parable, the, when the guy, when the friend comes in verse five, he initially asks only for three loaves, but when when God opens the door and gives this guy what he what God wants to give him, he doesn't. It doesn't say God gives him three loaves. It says God gives him as much as he needs. Uh, and so for me, I, I wanted to have that faith that I, that as much as I ask God that I need, He will give me. And uh, there's this the story of the Canaanite woman in in Matthew chapter fifteen. In Matthew 5, chapter 15, this, this Canaanite, uh, uh, Canaanite woman comes to Jesus and asks him to heal his daughter, to, to heal her daughter. And uh, Jesus kind of in, what seemingly insults her by saying, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she says in, in response in verse 27, Yes, Lord, but the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from the master's table. 
And Jesus, Jesus appreciates her faith. In verse 28, Jesus says, Your faith is great. It shall be done for you as you wish. But for me, as, and as reading that and kind of comparing this with Luke 11, what, I, what I was reminding me is, I can ask God for more than the crumbs. I am a child of God. And so if, not because I'm good, not because I'm, I'm holy, not because of who my parents are, not because of any good thing, but because Jesus died for me, Jesus came and he, he came for me, he, he came to make me a son of God, I can have the courage to say, Lord, I need every loaf that you have on your bread, on your table. I'm not satisfied with the crumbs that you give me. I want to have so much more. And so uh, as I pray for the Holy Spirit, I want to have that, um, that persistence and that confidence when I come to God, where I'm persisting in prayer, but also having the confidence that God will give me uh, much beyond what I need. Praise God. <laughs> Uh, thank God for what we heard. Uh, it's been a blessing to my life. I was uh, this week. Um, I was reminded of a person in Old Testament who took joy very seriously. We know Paul in New Testament, Philippians four four, who took it very seriously, and uh, um, we are meditating on Nehemiah, who, you know, is his king. Uh, tells uh, tells us that he, Nehemiah was a joyful man. Uh, and uh, in Nehemiah 8 also uh, Nehemiah tells the people to be joyful because he believes that that's the strength that God gives so then I was realizing that uh, if this is so important that it, that would be one of the main targets for the enemy to come and steal uh, it is clear that Jesus told um, in John 10:10 10, 10, that devil comes to kill steal and destroy and one of the things that I believe that devil really wants to steal is the joy. And uh, I was reminded today that how can I protect myself from this enemy that is going to target the joy in my life in all situations. I'm sure Jesus already um, fought that and won it. So why not I? So um, one thing I was uh, reminded uh, recently, Brother Zach was sharing in one of the conferences in, in Andhra Pradesh. And he was talking about the, the table, the, the Lord's table, uh, the bread and the, the wine. And he was saying, uh, he was um, reminding us, uh, he, he, was, he spoke from Luke 24. And if you see, you, you, very familiar story. But let's not lose the familiarity, uh, the devotion from it, as Jeremy said. Um, so in Luke 24, uh, M.A.S. wrote, Jesus was walking with these guys and they, he was opening the scriptures. And they were uneasy. The Bible says their hearts burn, which they say later. So they were feeling uneasy the, about this whole thing. And then later on, they come and sit in the house. And in verse, 20, verse 30 of Luke 30, 24, he says that he took the bread and blessed it and broke it. And he began uh, giving it to them and their eyes opened. So Brother Zach was saying that they saw the nail pierced hands when he broke it. And they said, hey, this is Jesus. And they immediately realized who he was, and their eyes opened, and they, they, and then he vanished. But they realized that uh, it was Jesus who came to them to minister to them. So, um, so I have to remind myself: number one, that uh, the same nail-pierced hand still minister to me every day, um, um, and that God has already put me in a in a place of uh, amazing blessing. Uh, um, he blessed me for my sins in Romans. We see that we are enemies of God. God has saved us from that. God has given us a salvation. God has given us uh, everything but we deserve. We deserve hell. That's, that's, that's one thing that I'm reminded again and again by Brother Zach. That if we go to God and say, give me what I deserve, God, God, God will give me hell. That's exactly what, what I deserve. But instead of that, he gave me everything else what I deserve then um, I should um, jump in joy and I should fight for the joy um, in the Lord uh, all the time and I should give him the due honor and respect he deserves. I uh, cannot allow pride to come in my life because another thing that Brother Zach shared is unthankful people are basically proud. So if I am unthankful before God, uh, then God is looking at me and saying, you basically are a proud person. You, um, I have done so much for you, but you still stand in front of me without giving me thanks and you know, you're not joyful. So um, these, these things remind me that um, we heard so many times, 
from Jeremy too that uh, joy is an act of will and I want to pursue that and um, ask God to fill me with Holy Spirit in every day so that I can give him due respect and honor that he deserves. Thank you. I just asked Bobby um, if I could share after Kamal. Um, I wanted to share two scriptures from John that have encouraged me. The first is John 12 um, verses 25 and 26. Um, Jesus says after saying that we have to be like a grain of wheat and die, he says, anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Um, so God gave this as a word of comfort to me that um, as someone who serves him, um, I have to follow him, even if um, the paths are, um, you know, uncomfortable or difficult in some way. Because um, I was just wondering, um, and then he gave me John 8 um, as kind of a counterpart to that. Um, John 8, verse 12. Um, Jesus spoke to the people. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So I can, I can know that whatever paths he's calling me to follow him in, that he, he is the light of the world. Um, and I have a promise that whoever follows Jesus will never walk in darkness, but have light. So I, I can know that I always have light, um, in every path that he calls me to. Yeah.